Hey everyone, today I've got something super cool to show you all. Horizon Plus by Sapitron, a custom overlay for SimHub that plugs into Horizon 5 to give your UI a makeover and add some racing sim features to your Horizon experience. If you want to know how to install this, I did make an install guide in a separate video, link in the description, but this video is all about showcasing what this overlay can do. First things first, this is a perfectly safe and fully allowed overlay with confirmation from Playground. It uses Horizon's data out feature to generate an overlay on top of the game window, and it doesn't involve messing with the actual game files whatsoever. So you can feel safe knowing this won't get you a warning or ban or anything for using mods you shouldn't be. Alright, now let's dive into what Horizon Plus can actually do. Like I said, this adds a bunch of sim features to Horizon, and it's implemented so cleanly that I'd bet it took you a second to even notice what all was different. Let's start by checking out the speedo and tack in the bottom right. I run the default analog version, but we'll cover digital users in a minute here. So as you can see, there's a few extra bits on the display, starting on the left with possibly the most obvious addition, a boost pressure gauge. Not only is this just a neat thing to have to watch big turbo cars spooling up, it does actually have some practical value, as cars with turbos or superchargers will often reach peak boost and peak power before hitting redline, so this helps you understand when to shift. Some cars benefit from being pushed all the way to redline, and some are faster if you shift sooner. This readout just helps you gauge that in a bit more live setting, without having to pull up telemetry or go into the shop to look at the power band. I use PSI for measuring boost pressure, but if you're more used to bar values, there is a bar version as well that you can switch to. Now, of course, this gauge is only really useful if your car is boosted. If not, it'll only read vacuum pressure, which isn't quite as important because your car in Horizon can't get vacuum leaks. But honestly, just having something like this on screen is still really cool to me. Next up, we'll look at the other pretty obvious change, these four little rectangles above your gear indicator, which as you've probably guessed by now, represent your tires. This shows an overall temp average per tire. Having this always on screen is amazing for tuning, especially on differentials and suspension where you can see while cornering what wheels are spinning or losing grip or overheating. I've found this super helpful when trying to build real-world inspired setups on different cars. On top of that, of course, having tire temps viewable at a glance is nice for dialing in what compound you should be running or just easily to diagnose grip issues. And in a live race setting, you'll know for example if your tires might be running a bit cold due to the season or weather and to expect a bit more understeer or lack of braking grip. Pulling info like this out of the telemetry windows and onto the main game UI is incredible, and something I feel should have been possible in the base game. Next up, let's check out the slightly more stealthy features that you've probably noticed and maybe even figured out by now. Hidden within the default tack are steering, clutch, throttle, brake, and handbrake indicators. These are really slick little overlay elements that pretty much do exactly what they say on the tin. Show your controller inputs for just about everything you do to drive the car. So the yellow here shows your steering input. You can see as I move the joystick left or right, it fills the bars and then resets in the middle. Then on the outside ring, the left green side shows throttle input and the right is red, and you guessed it, shows braking input. Then surrounding the default gear indicator, you have a light blue clutch ring that shows full clutch engagement. So if you're on controller with a button mapped to clutch, it just goes from invisible to a full blue ring. But if you play on a wheel and pedal set or have clutch mapped to a trigger or joystick, this ring will fill as you press the clutch in. Then finally, below and surrounding the clutch and gear indicator, we have the handbrake meter. This one, just like the others, will show fully as a half circle if you have your e-brake bound to a button, but of course will fill to show full engagement range on a sim handbrake, trigger, or joystick. All of these features being tucked so neatly into the default Forza UI is fantastic for many reasons. For one, as a content creator, I am often asked to show my controller inputs on screen. You see a lot of Forza streamers specifically with this controller overlay up at all times. 
but personally I've never liked running that because it takes away from the clean look of the game and blocks part of the screen. It just looks busy. With this though, viewers will always be able to see my inputs without having it distract from or block the main game. Another use case you might not have thought of for this is dialing in dead zones. Now we can see live without having to go into telemetry all of our inputs as the game reads them. So you can test things like trigger and joystick dead zones really easily. And if you don't know, having tight dead zones on your controller can really help cars in Horizon feel more responsive. All right, so that's pretty much this little corner of the UI covered. Now, like I said, digital UI users have not been forgotten. And as you can see here, all of the features I just talked about have been ported to work with the digital dash as well. And I gotta say, this overlay makes the digital dash look really slick. But now let's check out some of the other overlay bits added with Horizon Plus. Possibly the biggest standouts are these two elements here, which you may recognize if you're familiar with Forza's telemetry. This is the accelerometer or g-force meter and the suspension window. The accelerometer shows the g-forces being acted upon your car and is a great way to see how smoothly you're driving. Real race car drivers use this data all the time. In fact, accelerometers even come stock in some performance cars these days. I've showed this off as a useful feature in telemetry a handful of previous times in some of my other videos, but the problem is having the telemetry window open is super distracting. So being able to have a small meter that I can tuck into the existing UI is hugely beneficial. Right next to the accelerometer is essentially a mini version of the telemetry's suspension model, showing us spring compression. The little pink bars start in the middle, showing a neutral load, and then fill up as they compress and lower as they extend. This has never been the most important telemetry data, but it's still nice for showing you if you might be bottoming out on a low road car or need to make some adjustments to spring rates and rally or cross country. I'll take the opportunity here to shout out my own telemetry guide, which should help give a good basic understanding of what all this stuff means and how you can use it to better understand your car. It is made for Horizon 4, but the telemetry windows haven't changed, so it's still relevant today. Now finally we come to the top left, where some of my favorite features of this overlay are displayed. These show your top speed in either miles per hour or kilometers per hour, or both if you really want, then show live acceleration and lateral g-forces. These values go hand in hand with the accelerometer right below, and then we have a last lap time indicator, and finally, quite possibly the best feature to come to Horizon Plus, lap deltas. Now, if you aren't used to more serious sims or just unfamiliar with what a lap delta is, it shows a live difference between two lap times. In this case, against your best lap time. Think of it basically like a rival's ghost that always uses your best lap in the current session and shows you throughout your current lap if you are ahead, behind, or right on pace with that best lap. This is of course extremely helpful in lap races and especially rivals. For rivals, I've always recommended chasing your own ghost from time to time to find better lines and corner strategies. But the problem is when you chase yourself, you also don't get to see the best driver's lines. So now you can set your rival's ghost to a time you're shooting for and still use the Horizon Plus lap delta to get an idea of when you're making personal improvements and finding those perfect lines. Now, because of how rewind works in game, the delta gets a bit confused if you rewind during your lap, but this is still a huge improvement to the base Horizon game if you're a Rivals player. I've used it to great benefit in this month's Rivals event. Lap deltas are also amazing for custom tracks where you can't load in Rivals Ghosts. Like my test track, for example, where we do have sector time deltas built into the event lab rules, but now you can see a live, constantly updating delta as well. And this makes test track runs so much more fun. Now, finally, Horizon Plus also gives you alternate versions of the in-game lap count and race position readouts, if you would rather not use the in-game version. This isn't enabled by default because of course this info is already displayed normally in-game. However, you can't really move the default UI, and I haven't really talked about this yet, Horizon Plus is fully configurable. You can show and hide any information you want, resize anything, and move it anywhere around the screen. 
For me, I remove the top speed and g-force windows and move lap delta to the bottom middle of the screen so it's easier for me to see at a glance while I'm driving. Everything in Sappy's Horizon Plus overlay can be resized, moved around, activated and deactivated super easily. And if you like getting further into the details, you can even tweak data values, for example to set different hot and cold values for tire temp readouts. Or you can change the colors of any of the UI elements to suit your preferences. There is plenty of customization to SimHub and Horizon Plus, and I'll actually cover that more in detail in the install guide. So that is Horizon Plus, the 1.0 release anyway. Sappy, who is the sole developer on the project, has said that improvements are planned for the future. So even if it takes a while, I can't wait to see what this project continues to bring. This project has, I'm sure, been a lot of work and a long time coming. And I spoke to Sappy, who said they wanted to give a special thanks and shout out to the one hour of racing folks who were fantastic in helping him test the early versions of the overlay and also to Scar, who he's collaborated with in the past and also helped iron out some of the issues with Horizon Plus. So thank you from me to everyone involved in getting the Horizon Plus project to its 1.0 release. And thank you to everyone for watching this video. I hope you find this as cool and as helpful as I do. And if you want to install this for yourself and learn a bit more about how you can tweak it to your liking, of course, check out my install guide. All right, folks, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.